hesitate to ask for questions, but <laughs> I had a, I learned I went to grad school in California. And I had a very agile advisor. Who, when asked something he couldn't answer, said, "That's really something we should sit down and talk about." <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Uh, professor, your talk was uh, titled, Can Japan Survive? Yeah. What is your answer to that, and what does Japan need to do to be able to survive? I think I don't think the government, I don't know what the government's going to do in terms of debt and uh, how it will handle um, because it owes a lot of people for bonds or sold to them and so on. I think probably I did leave out something and I know I left it out because I don't really have information that's the effects of the Tohoku earthquake and tsunami, and this is related to your question, the effects of floods in Thailand. Because I honestly, I, I knew, you know, from reading, the Japanese companies first went into China, and then, in some cases, Chinese uh, prices of labor was going up. We all know this from times and so forth. So then they moved further south, Vietnam and so on. And it seems to me that probably, I don't know really about answering your question very well, but that somehow Japanese industry needs to develop overseas even further than it has, but also in tandem in these so-called modular ways of producing hopefully a lot of material at home as well as other parts elsewhere to, to strengthen the, the domestic uh, industrial base. How the government is going to to handle the aging population. There has been discussion of raising, them, as you probably know, the consumption tax. And I think this will happen fairly soon. Small businesses, particularly in retail, don't like it. But uh, and ordinary people aren't very happy. But uh, here's another small step toward a better public debt situation, a better governmental capability situation. But I think just like the, the uh, comments and the, the material we had tonight, I think that I go back to the need to measure so effectively that somehow these very complicated multi-sided processes get understood. So that we know what part of industry that supports what kind of households and what kind of incomes needs support and so on. I have a neighbor who is Korean American mm -hmm. and she grew up in Japan and she was a member of six generations that had grown up in Japan but she could not become a Japanese citizen. What would you recommend to Japan in terms of permitting people who are not Japanese to become citizens? And what would you recommend for Japan to have as an immigration policy to bring more young people into the country? I think it should be open. Because Japan, although we know there are untold numbers of competent technical people, 
we do it with more people, with more capable people coming in would be, I think, very good. Who's buying the bonds of Japan? Who is buying Japan's bonds? The Chinese? Bonds. Local people? The, the, bonds. the bonds. The bonds of the government. Japanese. The Japanese people themselves are buying the bonds. Okay. Or is it the Treasury Department? If, there's a, if those went on an international market, if that, that's one of the things that's kind of a, you know, could really so mess Japan up. So very little of their bond, very little of their debt is, is overseas. Is overseas. It's mostly internal that people are buying exactly. their bonds. Exactly. Is that because the interest rates are so high, or again, is it more of duty? I, you know, I, I was curious myself, and I, because some money came into Japan from outside, also mm -hmm. after 2008. And, and the argument, which is all <coughs> the argument was that Japan's a safe haven. Oh. So that's a pretty simple idea. But if it's true, I was intrigued by the last slide that you showed that showed the political uh, uh, dominance in uh, Japan, and I was particularly intrigued by Saitama Prefecture at the bottom there shows that the western half, the western third, is pretty much independent uh, factions, multi-party factions, and it's a big change from four years earlier when the Liberal Democratic Party was in control. It's, I looked at, uh, since Sayama is our sister city, and it's right in the part of that, the eastern part of that um, purple multi-faction Section. When I looked at the Sayama City website, looking at the city council, political affiliations, I noticed there are maybe 10 or 12 different parties represented, even uh, uh, communists in a couple of cases. And uh, I'm just curious as to what you think is going to happen in Saitama Prefecture with the new election. Do you think it's going to trend back to LDP? Uh, or do you, have a, do you have a take on that? I really don't. Um, my guess is parts of it will go LDP. I don't know things at the level you do. It. That's, that's a great way to... Mm -hmm. Some way to really get that. Mm -hmm. Remember the... Uh, Two weeks ago, before the election, we had these six pictures of Ohio, and Joe Allen did Northwest Ohio, and showed you know the traditional deep sense from the the farmers. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not. I don't know enough about Saitama, mm -hmm. and excuse me about Saitama. I've been to Uroa, you know, 15 times or so. I've been to. Media and I've been off to the north east, but I don't know the west side well. I've been to Colorado, but you know, yeah. you know how foreigners get taken around. And they have that too. Well, the, the western, you know, the western third is a little more rural than the Absolutely. central and, and no, eastern. Mm -hmm. Curious as to why it would be so many different parties represented there. Well, for a while, that, that really is. And for a while, there were a lot more parties at, at the local council and prefectural, prefectural assembly level than there were nationally. But it's still the way. Some mm -hmm. still there. 